A lost watch. Mia was a shop assistant on a giant cruise liner. Once she found a super expensive watch in the boutique she worked in and announced it on the radio. Soon, four people appeared. Each of them claimed it was their watch. Mia looked at all of them attentively and realized who the watch belonged to. Can you figure it out too? The man does have a watch tan line, but it's much bigger than the watch Mia found. The young girl already has a watch on her left hand. Why would she wear the second one? The elderly lady must be very absent-minded. Her dog is wearing her watch as a collar. So, the watch must belong to the teenager. A car accident Emily had been dreaming of having her own car for ages. And finally, she got it. The girl was so happy that she immediately went for a drive. She was a careful driver and never broke any traffic rules. But suddenly, she heard a nasty screeching sound and was jolted forward. When she got over her shock, she saw a red Toyota disappearing into the distance. It was a hit and run. Emily was extremely upset. In an awful mood, she continued on her way. Ten minutes later, though, she saw the very same red Toyota parked near a cafe. Emily ran inside and saw three visitors. The girl didn't need long to figure out who the driver that had hit her car was. It was the man on the right. The two other visitors are already eating, but he's still looking through the menu. An accident in a dance studio. Once, a dance studio owner found Dylan, one of the instructors, lying on the floor in one of the rooms. Someone had hit the man on the head. The owner called the police. They questioned the dance studio workers and visitors and found three suspects. Chloe, a regular, said she hadn't visited the studio for several days. She had several days off and spent them sunbathing on the beach. Ethan, another instructor, told the police his friend had called him and asked for help. That's why he had left the studio before Dylan came to work. Layla, Dylan's girlfriend, admitted they had quarreled earlier in the morning. But after that, she went to her best friend to talk about this situation. The police officers understood right away who was behind the attack. It was Chloe. She said she has spent several days on the beach, but her skin is extremely pale. A missing detective. Detective Henry Parker went missing while investigating a tricky case. His friend, Detective Davis, discovered that one of their colleagues was behind this disappearance. Davis visited Parker's home, and his friend's wife gave him a note. Henry asked me to give it to you if something happened to him. Please find my husband. On the note, there were just four letters, 2867. Davis started to question his colleagues. I've been on vacation all week, don't you remember? said Tess. Jack was worried. I haven't seen Parker for a couple of days. Do you think something awful has happened to him? And Nora replied, I'm just a trainee. Detective Parker gave me a task, and I was busy doing it. Davis thought for a while, looked at the note again, and understood who was guilty. You have seven seconds to do the same. It was Tess. 2867. The first letters of these numbers make up her name. Only one portal. Luke took part in a scientific experiment, but something went terribly wrong. He ended up in a place where there was nothing but three portals. One of them led to a polar desert in Antarctica. The second one opened into a volcanic crater filled with molten lava. And behind the third portal, there was the dinosaur age with huge diplodocuses roaming around. Which portal should the man choose? Luke would freeze in no time in a polar desert. Molten lava isn't even an option. 
But diplodocuses are totally harmless to people. They only eat plants. Missing paintings Detective Henry Taylor was getting ready for work when he heard screams from his neighbor's house. He rushed there. The door was locked. The man had to kick it several times before it gave way. He found his neighbor, Miss Anderson, in the living room. She was tied to a chair. Oh, I'm so happy you heard me shouting. An hour ago, a man knocked on my door and said he was an electrician. But as soon as I let him in, he tied me up and took all the priceless paintings I had got from my grandfather. And then he just ran away, leaving me here. Detective Taylor had to arrest the woman for staging the theft. How did he know? When he tried to get into the house, the door was locked from the inside. Who could do it if Miss Anderson was tied up and the thief ran out of the house in a hurry? Granny's Riddles Mark was starving after a long day at the university. His apartment was too far away, so he decided to drop by his granny's. He knew she always had something tasty to treat him to. Unfortunately, his granny had a quirk. First, a visitor had to crack her riddle, and then they got as much food as they could eat. This time wasn't any different. Granny gave Mark a slip of paper. There, it was written, Little, little, late, late. Can you understand what it means? Too little, too late. A stuck ball. Martin was playing with his new football. At one moment, he kicked it a bit too hard. The ball flew into the air and fell down a hollow fence post. The post was very narrow, and the ball barely fit there. But still, it got to the very bottom. Try as he might, Martin couldn't get the ball out of the pipe. Luckily, his friend David joined him. In no time, the second boy helped Martin to get his ball back. How did he do it? David used a water hose lying nearby. He filled the pipe with water, and the ball floated up. The main suspect One evening, Emma went to take out the trash from her coffee shop. She was about to leave when she spotted something dark in the corner behind the trash bins. It was a young woman, and she was unconscious. Emma rushed to her. The girl's bag and smartphone were lying nearby on the ground. The first person on the contacts list was named Big Sis. Emma called the number and heard a female voice. I found your sister lying on the ground. It seems someone hit her on the head. Oh my, how awful! I'll come immediately. Next, Emma called the police. The sister and the police officers arrived at the same time. Arrest this woman! She's behind the attack! And Emma pointed at the sister. Why did she say so? She didn't tell the sister where to come. How did she know the address? A dangerous teacher. Marta was walking through the park near her home in the evening. It was dark and there was nobody around. Suddenly, her bag was grabbed from behind and the person bolted away. Marta took off after them. She was pretty sure this person was a woman, but she couldn't make out her appearance or clothes. The woman disappeared inside a school building. When Marta ran inside, she saw three teachers. The girl looked at them attentively and soon figured out which one had taken her bag. Can you do the same? The woman in the middle wouldn't be able to run away with a cast on her leg. The one on the right doesn't have anything in her hands. Where would she hide Marta's bag so quickly? But the woman on the left has a big shopper bag on her shoulder. A real teacher wouldn't need to carry it in the classroom. A mysterious scientist. Joanna made a bet with her friends. She had to go to a deserted house in the middle of their town at night. No one lived there, 
and the house was supposed to be demolished soon. But rumor had it, a mad scientist used that building as his lab. It was about 3 a.m. when the girl saw a gloomy large building. The door was slightly ajar. She entered and saw a huge dark hallway. Suddenly, someone switched on the light and Joanna saw a bizarre-looking man in a lab coat. He stood there and stared at her for a few seconds before saying, Good morning, I'm Dr. Clark. But you aren't real, Joanna exclaimed. How did the girl figure it out? Even though the scientist had a reflection in the mirror, he didn't cast a shadow. It was a hologram. 